Any of you who have been coming to the library for years know that every Friday at 10 a.m. the Seton Hall students arrived by bus, by van, to read stories to our local nursery school kids or just families and kids who happened to be in the library or who knew that Friday morning was going to be a lot of fun with stories read to them by the students. Unfortunately, right now, we can't be in the building. Uh, and if you do want to come into the library, I'd say groups could not be in the building giving story hours. We're not doing any programming in the library. It's all virtual, but some outside activities. If you check our website, www.sopl.org, you'll see a list of the outside activities, which we hope to continue into uh, late fall. And coming into the library means wearing a mask. I have mine off now just so I can give the intro. And social distance, taking a temp when you come in, there's a kiosk as you come into the building, somebody will help you with that. And come into the children's room, get a library card, start reading. I know the schools are saying, read, read, read. So we're really lucky this morning to have the students here virtual reading stories to whoever we hope signs in or it'll be recorded and hopefully people will watch that way. But today's our very first Seton Stories of the fall semester. So welcome students. Hi, my name is Anne. I'm currently not on campus. I'm at home in Clifton, New Jersey. Okay, so um, I'm going to start reading this book. Oops, let me remove my background for a second. Let me just remove it so everyone can see. So I'm going to be reading this book, 10 Trick or Treaters, a Halloween counting book by Janet Shulman, illustrated by Linda Davick. And courtesy of Dragonfly Books. So this is the title. Ten trick or treaters on a dark and spooky night out to catch some candy or give someone a fright. So if you're watching this, let's count together how many trick or treaters you can see. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Very nice. Ten trick or treaters standing in a line. Along him, a spider. Can you spot the spider? It's right here. Along came a spider. So we still have our ten trick or treaters. And then there were nine. Let's count together. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Nine trick or treaters. The night was getting late. A toad hopped near. Does everyone see the toad? Maybe you could say out loud, what color is the toad? And then there were eight. Eight trick or treaters under racing clouds. A bat flew by. Can you see the bat? And then there were seven. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven trick-or-treaters filling, filling sacks with party mix. A ghost said boo. The ghost said boo. And then there were six. Six trick-or-treaters dancing to some jive. Can we dance in our seats when we watch this? Let's dance. A skeleton tried to join them. Can you spot the skeleton? And then there were five. Let's put up five fingers, just like this. Five trick-or-treaters knocking on a door there called a witch 
Does everyone see the witch? And then there were four. Four trick-or-treaters counting candy by a tree. A monster cried, give me some. <gasps> Did we see the monster? And then there were three. Ooh, one, two, three. Three trick-or-treaters. Why are there so few? A vampire crooned, good evening. See the vampire? And then there were two. Let's count. Can you spot the two trick-or-treaters? One over here and two. Two trick-or-treaters. They've had a night of fun. A mummy stumbled by. Look at the mummy. And then there was one. Can you spot the one trick-or-treater? She's right there. One brave trick-or-treater. Her Halloween is done. She climbed into bed. And then there were none. The end. That was 10 Trick-or-Treaters by Janet Shulman, illustrated by Linda Davick. Hi, my name is Taya Carver. I'm currently not on campus. I am here in my lovely home of Nashville, Tennessee, which is in the south of the United States. And today I will be telling the tale of Cinderella. Once upon a time, a girl named Cinderella lived with her stepmother and two stepsisters. Yes, two stepsisters. Poor Cinderella had to work hard all day long so the others could rest. It was she who had to wake up each morning when it was still dark and cold to start the fire. It was she who cooked the meals. And it was she who kept the fire going. The poor girl could not stay clean from all the ashes and cinders by the fire. Whew, that sounds awful. What a mess! <laughs> her two stepsisters laughed, and that's why they called her Cinderella. One day, big news came to town. The king and queen were going to have a ball. It was a time for the prince to find a bride. All the young ladies in the land were invited to come. They were wild with joy. I would be happy too, quite honestly. They would wear their most beautiful gowns and fix their hair extra nice. Maybe the prince would like them. At Cinderella's house, she now had extra work to do. She had to make two brand new gowns, two new dresses, that's unfair, for her stepsister. Faster, shouted one stepsister. You call that a dress, screamed the other. Oh dear, said Cinderella. When can I? The stepmother marched into the room. When can you what? Well, said the girl, when will I have time to make my own dress for the ball? You, yelled the stepmother. Who said you were going to the ball? What a laugh, <laughs> said one stepsister. Such a mess. <laughs> they pointed at Cinderella. All of them laughed. I feel so sorry for Cinderella. Cinderella said to herself, when they look at me, maybe they see a mess. But I am not that way. And if I could, I would go to the ball. Soon the time came for the stepmother and stepsisters to leave for the big party. Their fine carriage came to the door. The stepmother and stepsisters hopped inside, and they were off. Goodbye, said Cinderella. Have a good time. But her stepmother and stepsisters did not turn around to see her. Wow, they're so mean to her. I couldn't imagine living like that. Ah, oh, me, said Cinderella sadly. The carriage rode down the street. She said aloud, I wish I could go to the ball too. Then, poof, all of a sudden in front of her was a fairy. You cold, said the fairy. Did I, said Cinderella. 
Who are you? Why, your fairy godmother, of course. I know your wish, and I have come to grant it. But, said Cinderella, my wish is impossible. Excuse me, said the fairy godmother in a huff. Did I not just show up out of thin air? Yes, you did. Then let me be the one to say that what is possible or not. Well, I think you know I want to go to the ball too. She looked down at her dirty clothes. Oh, look at me. You do look a bit of a mess, child, said the go fairy godmother. But even if I had something nice to wear, said the girl, I would have no way to get there. Damn me. All of that is possible, said the fairy. With that, she tapped her wand on Cinderella's head. Boop! At once, Cinderella was all clean and very shiny and pretty. She was dressed in a beautiful blue ball gown. Her hair was set up high on her head inside a golden band. This is wonderful, said Cinderella. Who said I was done, said the fairy godmother. She tapped her wand again. At once, a beautiful carriage came to be with a driver and four white horses. One, two, three, four white horses. Am I dreaming? said Cinderella, looking around. It is as real as it can be, said the fairy godmother. But there is one thing you must know. What is that? All of this lasts only until midnight. Tonight, at the stroke of midnight, it will all be over. Everything will go back to how it was before. Then I must be sure to leave the ball by midnight. Good idea, said the fairy godmother. She stepped back. My work here is done. And with that, the fairy mother was gone. Cinderella looked around her. Did that even happen? But there she stood in a fine gown with a golden band in her hair. And there were her drivers and one, two, three, four horses before her waiting. Coming, said the driver. She stepped into the carriage, and they were off. Over at the ball, the prince did not know what to think. Why do you have that sad look on your face? The queen said to her son. Look around you. You cannot ask for finer maidens than these. I know, mother, but... Hello, and he couldn't say anything else. Look! Someone pointed to the front door. Who was that? All heads turned. Who was that lovely maiden stepping down the stairs? She held her head tall and looked as if she belonged, but no one knew her. There is something about her. I will ask her to dance. And he walked over to Cinderella. Have we met? said the prince. I am pleased to meet you now, said Cinderella with a bow. I feel as if I know you, but of course, that is impossible. Many things are possible if you wish for them to be true. The prince felt a leap in his heart. He and Cinderella danced, and when the song was over, they danced again. And then they danced again, and yet again. Soon the other maidens of the ball grew jealous. Ooh. Why is he dancing all the time with her? How rude! But all the prince could see was Cinderella. They laughed and talked and they danced some more. In fact, they danced for so long that Cinderella did not see the clock. Uh-oh, she's in trouble. Dong, said the clock. Cinderella looked up. Dong! The clock went again. She looked up again. Oh my, it's almost midnight! Dong! rung the clock. What does that matter? said the prince. Dong! called the clock. I must go. But we just met, said the prince. Why leave now? I must go, said Cinderella. She ran to the steps. I cannot hear you. The clock is too loud, said the prince. Goodbye, said, prince, said Cinderella. Up, up the stairs she ran. Please stop for a moment, said the prince. Oh dear! She said as one glass slipper fell off the, her foot of the stair. But Cinderella kept running up. Please wait a moment, said the prince. Goodbye. Cinderella turned one last time. Then she rushed out the door.
The clock was quiet. It was midnight. Wait, called the prince. He picked up her glass slipper and rushed out the door. He looked around but could not see her blue dress anywhere. <sighs> this is all I have left from her. Her one glass slipper. When I find it, I will find her too. Then I will ask her to be my bride. From hut to hut, from house to house went the prince. One young woman after another tried to fit her foot inside the glass slipper, but none could fit. So the prince moved on. At last, the prince came to Cinderella's house. He is coming, said one stepsister as she looked out the window. At the door, screamed the other stepsister. Quick, get ready. One of you must not be the one to fit your foot in that slipper, no matter what. The prince knocked. Come in. I have two lovely daughters for you to see. The first stepsister tried to place her foot in the glass slipper. She tried hard, but it just would not fit. Then the second stepsister tried to fit her foot inside. She tried and tried with all of her might, but no dice. Are there no other young women in this house, said the prince. None, said the stepmother. Then I must go. Maybe there is one more, said Cinderella. I thought you said you were no other. There were no other young women here, said the prince. None who matter, said the stepmother in a hiss. Come here, said the prince. Cinderella stepped up to him. The prince got down on one knee, and the shoe fit perfectly. And from her pocket, Cinderella took out something. It was the other glass slipper. I knew it, he cried. You are the one. What? shouted the stepsister. Not her, screamed the other. This cannot be, yelled the stepmother. But it was too late. The prince knew that Cinderella was the one. He looked into her eyes. He did not see the cinders in her hair or the ashes on her face. I have found you, he said. And I have found you, said Cinderella. And so Cinderella and the prince were married, and they lived happily ever after. So, hi everyone, I'm Zoe. Um, unfortunately, I'm not on campus right now, but I'm in my house in Morristown, New Jersey, so lots of fun. Today, I'm going to read Bark George by Jules Pfeiffer. And courtesy of uh, HarperCollins Publishers. So let's see if we can find a way, here we go. Okay, Bark George. Okay, George's mother said, Bark George. George went, meow. Huh, who goes meow? It's not a dog, is it? I wonder what it is, maybe we'll find out. No, George, said George's mother. Cats go meow, dogs go barf. Now bark, George. George went, quack, quack. Uh-oh, I don't think dogs go quack, quack either. What animal goes quack, quack? No, George, said George's mother. Ducks go quack, quack. Dogs go arf. Now bark, George. George went, oink. Uh-oh, we're still not barking yet. And George's mother is starting to get really mad. No, George, said George's mother. Pigs go oink. Dogs go arf. Now bark, George. George went moo. Uh-oh, what animal goes moo? I guess we'll find out. George's mother took George to the vet. I'll soon get to the bottom of this, said the vet. Please bark, George. George went meow. Uh-oh, he said meow again. This is turning into a big problem. The vet reached deep down inside George and pulled out a cat. A cat? George had a cat inside of him. Who would have thought of that? Bark again, George. George went quack, quack. The vet reached deep, deep down inside of George and pulled out a duck. Oh goodness, can you believe that George had both a cat 
and a duck inside of him? That's not good. Bark again, George. George went oink. The vet reached deep, deep, deep down inside George. And he pulled out a pig. Look at that pig. He's so big. He's bigger than George. What a strange situation this is. Bark again, George. George went moo. The vet put on his longest latex glove. Look at how long that is. Then he reached deep, 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 deep down inside George. That's really deep. I wonder what he'll find this time. And pulled out a cow. Whoa, George had a cat, a pig, a duck, and a cow inside of him. That's a lot of animals. Bark again, George. George went, barf. Oh, George finally made the correct sound. Yay, George. George's mother was so thrilled that she kissed the vet and the cat and the duck and the pig and the cow. Let's see how many animals were inside of George. We can count them right here. One, two, three, four. Four animals were inside of George. That's a lot of animals. George must have a very big stomach. On the way home, she wanted to show George off to everyone on the street. So she said, bark, George. And George went, hello. Uh-oh, what does that mean? Does that mean George has a human inside of him? I guess we'll never know because that is the end of the book. Hello everyone, my name is Nana, Nana Kadua. I am actually in Seton Hall right now. I'm in the dorms, um, so I'm not too far. Originally, I'm from Pennsylvania, that's where my family is, but I come here uh, for school. So today, we're going to be playing my favorite game. Let me just turn around so you all can see it. There we go. It is the an animal guessing game. Who am I? So this is by Steve Jenkins and Robin Page. And we have the courtesy of Hoffman Mifflin Harcourt in Boston, New York as a publisher. All right. So I have a sticky flicky tongue, bumpy green skin, two bulging eyeballs. 10 web toes, a floating lily pad, and a fly for lunch. Who am I? Anybody know who this is? We're going to see on the next page. I'm a frog. Raise your hand if a frog's your favorite animal. Next one, I have springy back legs, a fluffy white tail. A twitchy pink nose, two long furry ears, and a carrot too much. Who am I? Anyone know who this is? We're gonna find out. I am a rabbit. I have a big pinchy claw, two stalky eyes, eight scuttling legs, a tough blue shell, and a fish to catch. Who am I? You might see this one on the beach because I am a crab. I have a pink and black beak, bright colorful feathers, and two skinny legs. I also have a single white egg, just one white egg, and a nest made of mud, a long curvy neck. Who is this? I'm a flamingo. Look how pretty it is. Anybody ever seen a flamingo? I saw one at the Turbot Zoo. It's crazy. They're so pretty. 
The next one is, I have two round yellow eyes, soft silky feathers, a sharp black beak, eight grasping claws, and a mouse for a snack. Anyone has a mouse for a snack? No? Maybe that's not your favorite snack. But who am I? I'm an owl. Look at its wings, it's so big. I have a long grippy tail, 10 nimble toes, soft brown fur, eight clever fingers. Do we have eight fingers? I think we have five. One, two, three, four, five. And a banana to eat. Who am I? Let's see. I'm a monkey swinging from a tree. I have two touchy antenna, two delicate wings, nine black spots, hmm. two beady eyes, six wiggly legs. Anyone know who this is? Who am I? <clears throat> I'm a ladybug. <clears throat> So what do frogs eat? Frogs like to eat mice, snakes, fish, all birds, and other small creatures. Um, the bulging eyeballs, it helps them look around as well. Interesting facts about frogs is that the croaking kind of sounds like mooing of a cow. Anybody can moo? Moo. That's where the bullfrog comes from has webbed feet to make the frog a great swimmer. That's why you always see them in water. Where do they live? They will live in freshwater ponds. So they might not be in your backyard if you live in a forest, but just in your own pond. How big are frogs? Frogs are about the size of your hand. So if you can see your hand like this, that's as big as a frog. They turn into a rabbit, they like to eat grass and leaves. They have very furry ears if you ever see a rabbit and they help them listen for danger. If they hear something, that way they can know they can run. Where do they live? Meadows, forests, and grasslands. So you might see more rabbits around more than you see frogs, depending where you are. How big is it? Frogs, I mean, rabbits are not too big. They're generally smaller than you are, so you can see them far away. For crabs, what they eat, crabs live in the sea, so they really like the clams, they like snails, and baby turtles. I know it sounds weird, but those are things they like to eat. How big is it? The same thing, about the size of your hand, just like that. Interesting fact about crabs, they like to walk sideways because their knees bend. Flamingos, flamingos like to eat shrimp, snails, and algae. The pink color comes from what they eat, including the shells of a shrimp. You ever see a shrimp? It's nice and pink. Flamingos love that, so that's where they get their color. The owl, anybody ever seen owl? I have some in my backyard. I live near a forest. They like to eat other birds and frogs and rodents, but they have very soft feathers so it makes a nice soft sound so you don't really hear them too much they like to live in deserts wetlands and forests the spider monkey they like to eat fruits and nuts and insects where do they live tropical rainforest so you might not see a spider monkey in your backyard if you do you know tell your parents <laughs> how big are they they're jelly smaller than us they might be the size of you if you're a little tiny ladybugs ladybugs are so pretty you usually see them in the summer um they like the uh they smell uh taste and feel what their touchy antennae like we put right here how big is a ladybug? Anybody know? When you put your hand, it's really, really, really small. So it's not as big as your hand, it's definitely not as big as you. All right. 
And that is it. Thank you for playing with me. Lacey, I'm right now in South Orange, but I'm from all the way on the other side of, the, of America. I'm from California, so I'm very far from home right now. Today, I'm going to read The Billy Goats and Gruff. It's not The Billy Goats Gruff, The Billy Goats and Gruff. This is by, let's see, Robin Koontz. She also did all the pictures, courtesy by Work. Publishing. Three billy goats lived in a meadow. Do you guys know what a meadow is? There's a bunch of grass, flowers, it's so pretty. Everyone was friendly except for a troll who lived next to the bridge. Do you see the bridge? It's right past over here. We got the three billy goats and then a bunny. But no troll. I wonder where the troll is. The troll usually stayed inside his house. Oh my goodness, there's the troll. But on the first day of summer, he always came outside. He would pace back and forth over the bridge, yelling the same thing over and over. I want you all for dinner. <gasps> oh my goodness, that's terrifying. That's so scary. Look at the, look at the troll. So scary. So. On the first day of summer, everyone just stayed away from the bridge. See the troll? There he is, yelling on the bridge. I would stay away from the bridge too if I heard someone wanted me for dinner. Oh my goodness. One spring day, the three goats found yummy flowers in a field across the bridge. They were so full after eating flowers all day that they decided to spend the night. That sounds nice, eating flowers all day and then sleeping in them. Look at them, they're all sleeping, they're so happy. The next morning, as the littlest goat tromped across the bridge, the troll yelled, Where do you think you're going? I'm going home, said the little goat. Oh, that's so scary. First, I'm going to have you for dinner said the troll. <gasps> My brothers are coming, cried the little goat. Good, said the troll. I will have them for dinner too. <gasps> oh my goodness, is the troll going to eat all the goats? <gasps> Let's see. They will butt you with their horns, said the little goat. Well, that's the thanks I get, grumbled the troll. Look, he looks so sad. Why does the troll look sad? Why are you so grumpy? Asked the little goat. You said you were going to eat us. I did not, cried the troll. Hmm, didn't he say that? I think the troll wanted them for dinner. What do you think? Let's find out. Every summer, the same thing happens, said the troll. I tell everyone to come for dinner and they ignore me. <gasps> what is he saying? To come for dinner? <gasps> Just then, the other billy goats saw their little brother with the troll. They put their heads down and charged at the troll. Do you know what that means? Go <sighs> with their horns. That would be very scary. I would not want to be charged by a goat. And there's two big goats. Oh my goodness. <gasps> Look. Now it's the troll's turn to look scared. My goodness. Stop, yelled the little goat. Mr. Troll just wants to have us over for dinner, said the little goat. My name is Gruff, said the troll. Would you please join me for dinner? The three billy goats and Gruff had a tasty meal. Oh my goodness, can you believe that? The troll just wanted to have them over for dinner. That's crazy. Soon, everyone found out that Gruff was a fantastic cook. Oh my goodness, look how delicious that salad looks. Mm -mm. So many fruits and vegetables. His yearly dinner party became famous throughout the land. <gasps> look how fun. Gruff cooked for everyone, and there are the rabbits. <gasps> 
and the goats, and they're all eating together and they're all friends. That's so fun. The end. My name is Isabella Joseph, and I do go to school at Teen Hall and I'm dorming, but right now I'm home for the weekend. So the book I'm going to be reading is called The Gingerbread Baby. You guys like babies? I like babies. It is by Jan Barrett. Here we go. It was cold outside. It was warm inside. A fine day for gingerbread, Maddie thought. You guys like gingerbread? Maddie's mother put the big blue bowl on the table and hit the stove. Maddie took down a worn looking cookbook with an old fashioned writing on the cover. He opened it up to the page that said, gingerbread boy. They measured and mixed. Maddie rolled the dough into the shape of a gingerbread boy and they popped him in the oven. Bake a full eight minutes. No more, no less. Don't peek, the recipe read. Maddie listened to the clock. Tick, tock, tick. One minute, two minutes, three, four, five. Maddie couldn't wait any longer. He opened the oven door to take a peek. Oh no, why did he do that? Instead of a gingerbread boy, out jumped a gingerbread baby. He pranced around the big blue bowl. I am the gingerbread baby, fresh from the pan. If you want me, catch me if you can. Are we going to help Maddie run after the gingerbread baby? Maddie's mother reached for the gingerbread baby to put him back into the oven. But he came, he ran all around the kitchen. The door opened and in came Maddie's father. What's that delicious smell? He asked as the gingerbread baby tumbled through his legs and outside into the yard. Do you see him going? He ran by the tabby cat. She twitched her tail and sprang at him. They rumbled and tumbled, but the gingerbread baby came out on top. He ran toward the garden wall. The dog caught up a whiff of a tasty ging ginger and sniffed along behind him. But the gingerbread baby was halfway up when the dog caught up. He barked and barked and the gingerbread baby climbed over the wall. <gasps> Maddie was still inside. He heard his mother and father yelling. He heard a cat meowing and a dog barking. And he heard the gingerbread baby shouting, catch me if you can. Maddie opened up the worn looking cookbook for the second time. What's Maddie looking for? Meanwhile, the gingerbread baby wheeled on down the path and into the barn. The goats looked up as he somersaulted across their backs. The last one tried to catch him, but the gingerbread baby was too fast. Martha and Madeline were standing by the well when the gingerbread baby stopped to take a drink. They looked at each other and winked. Martha started to talk to him while Madeline tiptoed up behind him with the bucket. But they couldn't fool that gingerbread baby. He was too smart. He took a braid from Martha and a braid from Madeline and tied them in the knot and ran down the road. Back in the house, Maddie stirred, mixed, and rolled the dough. What's Maddie making now? He shaped it, put it in a pan, and put it in the oven. Tick, tock, tick. Eight long minutes. This time, Maddie didn't peek. I will catch him if I can, Maddie said to himself. As he was bouncing along, the gingerbread baby saw a farm wagon just ahead. He jumped in and settled down for the ride. Next to a mama pig. The smell of the gingerbread was too much for her. She tossed him high in the air, closed her eyes, and opened her mouth. <gasps> she couldn't eat him. But the gingerbread baby twisted in the air and came down hard on her porky snout. I am the gingerbread baby, too quick for the mother and the father. Too fast for the cat, the dog, the goats. Too clever for Martha and Madeline. Too smart for the mama pig. Who's left? Catch me if you can. 
feeling smug, the gingerbread baby strolled along by himself until he came to a bridge that crossed over to the village. Just as he got to the middle, he heard running feet behind him and saw a crowd of villagers ahead of him. The gingerbread baby was trapped. He jumped up onto the railing, back flipped through the air and landed on a chunk of ice floating down the river. The ice bobbled along with the gingerbread baby, dancing on top and singing in a loud voice, look at me and what do you see? The best gingerbread baby ever, until his feet got cold and he jumped ashore. Who was watching from the trees? It was the fox. He crept up behind the gingerbread baby, ready to eat him up. But the fox couldn't help himself and he licked his chops. Smack, smack. The gingerbread baby heard him and ran as fast as he could. Just when the fox was catching up, the gingerbread baby saw the milk and cheese man with his can of milk, the perfect hiding place, he thought. He lifted the lid and lowered himself inside. He was so pleased that he sang at the top of his gingerbread voice, ha ha, he he, you'll never find me. I'm the gingerbread baby, catch me if you can. The milk and cheese man heard the gingerbread baby's voice. Who's meddling with my milk, he shouted and lifted the lid, but the gingerbread baby was ready. He jumped up and tweaked his nose. Now the milk and cheese man, the fox, the villagers, the mama pig, Martha and Madeline, the bleeding goats, the barking dog, the meowing cat, the father and mother were all after the gingerbread baby and getting closer, and he knew it. The brash baby was not as preppy and proud as he had been. He sniffed a familiar smell and followed his nose into the woods. What's he smelling? Can you guys smell it? He couldn't believe what he saw. There in the middle of a clearing was a gingerbread house, frosted with sugar, covered with candy, and the doors with peppermint handles wide open. The gingerbread baby clapped his hands and with glee ran inside. In a tick tock tick, everyone arrived in the clearing, but all they found were a few bits of frosting, a peppermint candy, and some crumbs. The father exclaimed, the gingerbread baby has finally met his match. I wonder who it was, the mother said. Let's go home and tell Maddie. Hello, Maddie, his father said when they got home. We never did catch that gingerbread baby. All we found were some crumbs in the snow. I see you've been busy, his mother said, looking at the gingerbread house Maddie was holding. Too bad we never caught that gingerbread baby. Too bad, said Maddie. Only Maddie could hear the tiny voice from inside the gingerbread house. I'm the little gingerbread baby, lucky as can be to be living in the house that Maddie made for me. The end.